Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our South Tyrol Masterclass. And um, this is one of the sessions taking place as part of TTG's second Digital Destinations Festival. Yesterday, our festival week kicked off with a seminar hosted by TTG's group editor, Pippa Jacks. And she was asking how the Balearics and the Caribbean are preparing to welcome Brits back. In case you missed it, you can catch up with that now at ttgmedia.com forward slash Destfest. I'm Maddie Barber, I'm the Special Projects Editor at TTG, and I'm joined today by Sarah Gross from South Tyrol Destination Management Organisation. She's the main contact for travel agencies and tour operators in the UK. Um, so during this masterclass um, for South Tyrol, we're going to be covering essential information such as location, languages, journey options, um, and, ha and how well suited South Tyrol is to tourism soon after borders reopen to visitors. Um, yeah, I'm also going to be talking about the activities and attractions available to visitors to South Tyrol and what type of clients they're best suited to. So you can do a bit of client matching there. And um, we're also going to cover accommodation options and what kind of budget clients visiting South Tyrol will need. And we will flag a new Netflix show that was filmed in South Tyrol and launched last week. If you have any questions throughout this live session, feel free to type them in the comment section on Facebook and we will do our best to get back, get back to you live and answer them live. So Sarah, coming to the first section, about essential information, um, agents who don't currently sell a lot of holidays to Northern Italy might not be familiar with South Tyrol. Um, so will you please tell us some of the basic destination information such as location, languages, um, and kind of a bit about its culture? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, of course, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about South Tyrol. Well, um, South Tyrol is the northernmost province of Italy. In the north, we are bordering to Austria and in the west to Switzerland. Before 1919, uh, South Tyrol was part of Austria and only after the First World War, uh, we became part of Italy. Um, we speak three languages here. So our main language is uh, German, a dialect. We speak Italian and then a small percentage of people speak Latin. Uh, the nice thing is in our dialect, we do use a lot of Italian words as well. Um, our traditions are very similar to the Austrian traditions, but influenced by the Italian way of life. Um, South Road is all about mountains, um, but we also have palm trees and very hot summer days. And um, we have a really nice food culture. Um, it's very Alpine Mediterranean mix. So definitely a place to visit for foodies. Great. And, and do you think South Tyrol is a suitable destination um, for tra UK travel agents clients hoping to travel soon when social distancing measures uh, may still remain in place? And if so, what, why, is, why is it a good option? I, I think so, because um, the safety standards has always been very high and now even higher. Um, we have to follow strict regulations when it comes to cleanliness. Uh, so nobody should be afraid to travel to South, South Tyrol. Um, the distancing measures uh, got easier. We do not need to wear a mask uh, all the time, only uh, when we are very close to other people who are not part of our household or less than one meter. Um, in restaurants and bars, you can enjoy a delicious food or a nice aperitivo, no problems at all. And um, well, 20% of South Road is only populated. So if you really want to be alone, just go in the outdoor and enjoy. Yeah, lo lots of space to enjoy the Yes, outdoors. lots of space. And, and, and what is the best way to travel to South Tyrol from the UK? I mean, what are the main routes that clients yeah. can take? Well, of course, by plane. I think that's the, the main route the travelers take. Um, the closest airports are Innsbruck in Austria and then Verona. They are both e like one and a half hours away. But then, of course, we have also the bigger airports like uh, Bergamo, Milano, uh, Venice or Munich. Uh, it's always an option um, to come by car or for the adventures, you just take the train via Brussels and then you have a night train to Innsbruck. So also an option. Okay, great, thanks. And what are the most popular itineraries that UK travelers are, are, are taking in South Tyrol right now? I think that uh, the most travelers go visit the Dolomites region. The Dolomites are a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so they are very popular. I also think many UK travelers are visiting uh, the city Bolzano and Meran to enjoy the Mediterranean climate we have. 
Um, I would recommend a few days in the mountains, so to get some uh, fresh air and uh, or to enjoy the quiet. And uh, I would also have a look at the medieval towns like Klausen and uh, Bolzano or Glurens in the Finchgau Valley, and that's also uh, close to the Swiss border. And um, or you, for the bike enthusiasts, uh, I think uh, for UK travel also very interesting is um, the Stelvio Pass in the Stelvio National Park or the Gardena Pass in the Dolomites. Okay, great. And what about um, in destination um, ways to get around? I mean, is, is it, what's the best way to get around? Is there is it public transport or are there trains? Kind of what, what's the situation there? Well, of course, we encourage people to take the public transport and it is an easy, the easiest way to get around or by car. But many hotels are offering a guest card, a free guest card, um, where you can use the public transport in whole South Row. So it's very easy to get around. Okay, great. And, and moving on to activities and attractions in South Tyrol, uh, what would you say is the activity or attraction that most people come to South Tyrol for? I mean, what, what do they come to do or see? I would say uh, in winter to uh, ski the Stella Ronda in Val Gardena, Alta Badia, and in summer for hiking. And uh, South Tyrol is a good address for food lovers. Okay, great. And, and you mentioned uh, skiing there. It, what was, what's the skiing like in South Tyrol? Is, is it more suited to a specific type of traveller, such as families or groups of friends, or, or is it kind of accessible to, to anyone who likes skiing? I think it really depends what you're into. I think you can, it's for everyone. Um, the person who loves skiing all day long uh, will take advantage of the Dolomiti Super Ski, where you have 1,200 kilometers of slopes. Or a family might choose a smaller ski area um, where you can go skiing in the morning to a toboggan run in the afternoon, have a stroll through the city. And uh, also in those smaller ski areas, you have slopes from blue to black. Um, you have snow parks with half pipes. And uh, if you're a group of friends, you can go to Meran 2000. So you're very close to the city, have some nightlife. So it's up to you. Okay, great. And, and what about what other activities are available to active outdoorsy types? Besides uh, winter, we have um, in summer the Via Ferrata. Uh, you can go rafting, you can go high ropes or kite surfing. Uh, set or long distance paths, uh, long distance cycling paths like from Munich to Venice. Um, but of course, besides skiing in winter, you have snowshoe hiking, you have cross country skiing or uh, snow kiting, also very interesting. Okay, great. And, and what about for those that like to take things a little easier, um, you know, are looking for a bit more of a relaxed holiday, maybe they're interested in art and culture. Um, is there anything in South Tyrol to, you know, attract that type of holiday maker? Mm -hmm. We have, uh, for instance, um, in Bolzano, you can go visit uh, Ötzi. He was born about 5,300 years ago, and he's our oldest and most famous South Tyrolean guy. He was found about 20 years ago by German tourists, and he is now an exhibition in the archaeology museum. And uh, for those who like modern or contemporary art, uh, I would suggest going to the museum. Okay, great. And of which of the activities that you've mentioned, uh, apart from skiing that you've already talked about, um, or, or others, are good options for multi-generational families, so people that are traveling um, with, a, with a range of age groups? Um, well, I would suggest um, going in autumn uh, to uh, where the temperatures are not too hot, but still very nice, um, to the Merano area, or basically all over South Tyrol. Uh, we have in the Finchgau uh, Valley, we have the Valwege, but also near Meran, which are um, uh, channels designed for the irrigation of wineries and um, vineyards and orchids. So those paths are very easy and accessible for every age. And then for the more uh, sporty ones in the family, they can just go on the mountaintop and do a really um, uh, exhausting hike. And uh, the families can go on a nice uh, family walk, like the Woody Walk uh, at the Plosa, which is near Brixen. It's um, a family hike where you have lots of stations to just play and relax. Okay, 
Okay, great. And culinary experiences are often something UK travellers are keen to include in their itinerary. Because um, obviously the UK is, is really big on food and drink. And what can visitors to South, to South Tyrol expect from the food and drink experiences there? I think like many of you might have uh, realized that uh, we love food. <laughs> I said it quite a few times and we love our wines. Um, we have a, a wide selection, um, a vast selection of white wine and every 12th award winning white wine in Italy comes from South Tyrol. Um, when it comes to food, we have 19 Michelin star restaurants in South Tyrol. Uh, in our cuisine, we focus really on the essential, on fresh and preferable regional um, ingredients. Um, I think what distinguishes us uh, the most is our Alpine Mediterranean creations. Uh, we also have our traditional inns. Uh, in those, they're called Tutirola Gasthaus. In those, uh, you can experience the hospitality, tradition, and um, the quality. They are really live there. And if you want to have a great experience, just book a cooking class and just do it yourself. Experience it firsthand. Yeah. I, I know I love to include a cooking class on my own holidays, for sure. Yeah, it's the best. Great. And I th believe we've had a question come in um, from Will Cardell. What's the best and most known hiking trail in South Tyrol? Wow, the best and most known hiking trail. Um, well, I think we have um, the high altitude hiking trails, which you can do in six days. It's above Meran. It's the Merano um, Hohenweg in German, um, Hamerano uh, High Mountain Trail. So I would say that's a, a very known trail. And of course, uh, trails in the, in, in the Dolomites. Um, wow. it's, it's really tough to say. Yeah, okay. Because, Lots to choose from. Yeah. Cool. Um, and we've also had another one from Rupert Longsden, um, who's asking what are the best routes to travel to the region from the UK by air, car, um, and train, but he, I know we've already covered that, as we said, in mm -hmm. winter more specifically. So, so does it differ, um, the best way to get there, depending on the seasons? She asked in winter, sorry? Yes, winter specifically, yeah. Well, I think uh, with, with the plane to uh, Verona from London or from Manchester that launched last, um, last autumn, if I'm not mistaken, or Innsbruck, because in winter Innsbruck uh, is very, um, a lot, they have lots of flights. And Innsbruck is very close, so you can take the train from there um, or uh, the public transport. Okay, great. Um, and we've got another question from Will. Um, what are the visible influences of Austria and Italy in South Tyrol? Are there any influences in food, architecture or landscapes? From the Austrian? Um, from, yes, from Austria. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can and, see and, that in... And Italy as well, so I guess he's asking... Um, yeah, what, what, what kind of, where can you see the Austrian influences and where can you see the Italian? Um, I think the best um, mix you can see in, in, in Bolzano, uh, because in the, in the center, in the historical town, the influence is, is uh, Austrian. But then if you go in the surroundings, it's, you also with the houses, you can see more the it Italian influence of building, because after the First World War, um, uh, let's say in the 50s, uh, a lot of uh, people from the south or uh, came to Bozen, to Bolzano, and uh, you can really see it in the buildings there, that you have this, it already seems more being in Italy than in, 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 in South Tyrol. If you go to a city like Sterzing uh, on the border to uh, Austria, it it's, has nothing to do with Italy. It's the, 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 the buildings are uh, similar to uh, Innsbruck. Um, yeah. And with the traditional clothing, uh, clothing on a Sunday, it's, uh, has, it's really Austrian roots. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. So moving on to um, accommodation in South Tyrol, um, kind of what, what range of accommodation can visitors expect to um, have to choose from? Is it all luxury ski lodges or are there, or are there options for clients traveling on different budgets as well? No, it's of course not all luxury. Um, you can have a, you can go in a bed and breakfast in an apartment, you can go uh, in a farm stay, 
you can have a cozy three-star hotel or of course the five-star luxury uh, wellness hotel and um, 90 percent of our hotels uh, or accommodations are family owned and run and um, when it comes to budget i would say we range a week for two people between 500 and 3000 euros in mid-season yeah oh, so that's a pretty good range for people with different budgets yeah really good cool um and now moving on to the uh, netflix series i mentioned at the beginning um so it launched last week and was filmed and is set in south Tyrol. Uh, what's it about and, and can viewers see some of the destination's best sites in the shots? Um, the Netflix series was launched uh, on 10th of June. It's the first Netflix production in South Tyrol. It's a mystery thriller. It's uh, the, the main place is in Finchgau, uh, the Reschensee with the tower uh, in the lake. Uh, there's a sunken city under it. Um, I think that's the, the main focus of the of the series. Mm, and uh, but said that South Tyrol um, is a film location, and uh, we have the film fund as well. Uh, I think it started like in 1967. Roman Polanski uh, did parts of his movie uh, The Fearless Vampire Killers on Saisa Alm. Uh, so really a must watch <laughs> and five years ago um, Everest was filmed in Schnallstahl and it starred uh, Josh Brolin and Emily Watson so yeah Great. and Netflix is now the latest yeah Lot, lots to watch then and see, and see South Tyrol and, and it's uh, I think I don't know if I mentioned it it's called Couron the Netflix series is called Couron cool thanks you um, we have another question from Jennifer Wilson He's asking, is there a website link um, to it for agents and operators who specialize in walking and activities? So what was the work where can agents and operators find out? Um, agents and operators specialize in walking activities. Where can agents um, find those types of operators to work with? You mean the incoming agencies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They can always, uh, we have them all on our website as well. So it's uh, sweatyroll.info uh, slash B2B. Um, but they can always contact me and I can give them the right uh, incoming agency specializing in uh, hikes and also different areas because we have incoming agencies who specialize in the Dolomite region and then we have incoming agencies who specialize more uh, the western part of South Tyrol. So it all depends. Great. And what's the best way to contact you for agents that would like to find out more? By mail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, or call me. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Great, so I think that's all the questions. Is there anything else agents should know about South Tyrol right now? Well, I, th I could go on and on and on, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, there is a lot more and uh, I'm more than happy to answer all the questions and they can get in touch with me, no problem at all. Okay, great. And, and yes, for any agents that are watching, um, feel free to type um, even more comments if you like in, this, in the comment section. Um, questions in the comment section of the Facebook video um, and yeah I can link you up with Sarah um, af after the masterclass. So I think that's about all we've got time for today but if you'd like to see more TCG masterclasses uh, we have um, one with the beaches and Fort Myers and Sanibel um, at three, three o'clock tomorrow that's also part of the TTG Digital Destinations Festival um, and to find out more about the festival and timetable and previous content, you can go to t2gmedia.com forward slash deskfest. So thank you, Sarah, for joining me. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for watching. And um, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.